that we started off the last Friday. Okay, tonight we continue on on the prophecy that we started on last Friday on uh, prophecy for 2015 to 2034. Some important things that we still uh, haven't managed to touch on, although we touched on some areas. And uh, So let's go to God in prayer, even tonight and this coming morning, as we wait upon Him in all night prayer. Father, for Your Word that is coming forth, we ask that You establish Your Word as a pillar in our lives. Establish your word upon our spirits and upon our souls, especially upon our souls, O oh Father. Because your Holy Spirit can only work to the extent in which our soul is renewed and to which our soul is renewed and transformed by your word. That the physical body and all nature around us could have the same spirit of glory that is upon our spirit, that the physical body will be full of the glory of the presence of God. And only our soul, Father, need to reach its renewal state, that the spirit can flow through the soul to the physical body. And as we gather together in your midst, Father, we are so, Father, that you renew our hearts and our minds, Touch every heart and every mind and every soul and every part of the being that need renewal. We thank you, Father, for strengthening the angels that are in our midst and the spirit beings that are in our midst. Let your light shine, Father, from your very throne over each heart and each mind, over every living creature here in our midst. Let us see the glory that come from you, O oh Father, that we may bask in your presence, in the presence and holiness of you, Almighty Father, revealed from before the foundation of the world, and in your greater glory that you have revealed to Christ our Lord and our Master and God. We thank you, Father. We worship you. We bless you. Establish your work in your glory. This light of your glory that you say, Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon each one of us. Let it be visible upon each one of our heart and life and upon each one of our eyes that we may see the glory of the Lord tonight. We thank you, Father, and we bless you and praise you, giving you all the glory, worship, and honor. Let Jesus our Lord be manifest in all His glory and cause us to worship You and bow before You. For You are worthy, Father, of all glory, praise, and worship. We thank You, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. From 2015 to 2020, concludes the decade of glory and then the next seven years as we move into that from 2020 to 2027 God has begun to show more about what the decade of power will be like and we can describe more about it tonight God has also shown what the third cycle of 2027 to 2034 is like. And that we'll touch on tonight. Which is why this is part four of the prophecy series. Part one we introduced last Friday. Part two is a prayer that we want everyone to enter into. Part three was a continuation of uh, what we delivered last Friday. Today is part four and hopefully we conclude that. So what will happen in these next five years? We know that these seven 
last seven years represent a decade, a decade of uh, prosperity followed by the decade of uh, uh, famine which will take place. Uh, that's in the world. What is happening in the church and what will take place? Between now and 2020, God is clothing His people with His glory. And when 2016 comes, it is more or less established in all the different parts. This is why we are beginning to encounter the four living creatures on the throne who cried out, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. This year we will finish what God has assigned for us to do in building altars throughout the world. On an individual basis and uh, also under assignment, uh, as God led some of you, you might go to some of the countries to build uh, various, various altars that the Lord uh, has. Like for example, uh, Kenneth uh, in Hong Kong is going to go all over China to build altars uh, under delegation. Uh, for we, we build one main altar and he goes forth and build all the other altars all over China. and uh, So we are building the main altars where we are planting all the main 10 base churches throughout the world. We will complete that by September 2015 this year. What will happen after uh, September 2015 uh, this year to September 2016? Year by year, God will be clothing His people with His glory. And it is like the clothing that, of glory that God puts upon Aaron the high priest. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Exodus. And God was making the garments for the high priest. After God gave them the Ten Commandments, and uh, God began to give them various laws, and among all His various laws and the fees and all the things that God spoke to them, uh, that they affirm in the covenant, God began to talk about the building of all the different parts of the sanctuary. He started with chapter 25, the Ark of the Testimony, which is very important. In fact, the Ark of the Covenant has been so touched by the glory of God that it will not remain on the earth. In the mid-tribulation rapture, when uh, the final group of people are raptured uh, together uh, with the rapture of uh, Enoch and Elijah, and then there will be some staggered uh, rapture that is take, taking place after that. Uh, and uh, in that time, uh, the Ark will also be taken up because it has been touched by the glory of the Lord. With the table of showbread, the golden lampstand, the uh, outer parts of the tabernacle in chapter 26, the altar burnt burn offering. Now notice the pattern. God starts from the inside and starts building from the out to the outside in the pieces of the tabernacle. So God uh, now, of course, the Ark of the Covenant represents our Lord Jesus Christ and all His uh, various things that He does for us. Uh, but the reason it's built that way is the opposite so that God can bring us from outside in. Jesus came from the glory of God and came down to this earth, God's footstool, down the cross for us, and then He brought us all the way in. God always starts from where He is. Chapter 28 is where the priestly garments are mentioned. And so, in verse 1, chapter 28 of Exodus, Now take Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister to me as priests, Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, Itama. And you shall make holy garments. Please note, these are holy garments. They are not allowed to be worn under normal times. They are only to be worn when Aaron performed the priestly work that God assigned for him. 
When they finish a priestly work, they must take off all their holy garments, leave it within the holy place, and then exit in their ordinary clothing. They are holy garments that cannot be taken off. For Aaron, your brother, and notice what it, what it is for, for glory and for beauty. What is the beauty of the bride of Jesus Christ? The glory of God. So God is clothing the bride and preparing the bride for His glory. If you live to 2020 to 2027, you will see the glorious church. Look at all these various beauties. As some of you, in your vision, you see different types of lights. Well, look at all this glory and beauty. Verse 3. You shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priests. These are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. So they shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother and his sons, that he may minister to me as priests. Now these how many parts there are. The breastplate, the ephod, the robe, the woven tunic, the turban, the sash. All together, six different parts. Six is a number of men. It's not necessarily a bad number. Six is three plus three. The trinity of man meeting the trinity of God. And a priest stands in between that. So between 2015 uh, September, right on to 2020 uh, September 2020 God is putting layers of glory upon His church. It is a period in which year by year the glory and the anointing of God will be increased. And God is working upon the 12, in the second generation, the 12, the 70, and the 30. And in the first generation, is working the 30 mighty men and women, and the 70, and the 120. All together, about 500 people, God is going to specially cloth them, and train them, and minister to their lives, in these five years. Besides being a period of glory, it's a period of training. Training in what? Training in the service of God in His glory. Training to handle the glory of God. Year by year, the glory is going to increase upon each one of our lives. Verse 5. They shall take the gold, blue, purple, scarlet thread, and the fine linen. They shall make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Fine woven, woven linen artistically work. It shall have two shoulder straps joined at its edges, so it shall be joined together. And the intricately woven band of the ephod which is on it shall be of the same workmanship made of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, thread, fine woven linen, and it shall make two onyx stones, engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel. Six of their names on one stone, six on the other, in order of the above, with the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, you shall engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel. You shall set them in settings of gold, and you shall put the two stones on the shoulders of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel. So Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders as a memorial 
You shall also make settings of gold, and shall make two chains of pure gold like braided gold cords, and fasten the braided chains to the settings. So God is going to give each one of us who are trained among the 500 the ephod. And all that the ephod represent, different things, and these are all spiritual clothing that He is putting on each one of you, a part at a time, a piece at a time. And the two stones represent the responsibility you have taken upon yourself. That is what God has done. So there will be the ephod, and then the breastplate, which is a breastplate of judgment, and there are twelve stones on it. Each is beautiful in itself. All these are symbolic, of which we don't have time to go into details, but each one of those represent different things, and by the time you receive the breastplate, you will know the Lord, because the Urim and the Tumim are right over the breastplate, and hidden in the breastplate, which means you receive the Urim and the Tumim. That is in verse 30. Together with the breastplate is the Urim, and the two men. Those are secret things that God's going to place upon each one of us. Now these are the things that are being made. And then there are the other priestly garments, the robe, uh, ephod, all of blue, and uh, followed by uh, the turban, which, which represents, uh, and it says, His holiness unto the Lord. And when Aaron is clothed, is actually from the inside out. When God made from the outside in, it looks like that. Uh, there's all these pieces that are covering the outside. But when you're actually putting on the clothing, it's from the inside. You have the white garment, the white tunics. Uh, they are from the inside, a fine linen thread. And uh, then these are to cover uh, your spiritual nakedness, uh, linen before the Lord in verse 41. And then you put on one layer at a time. And so you will be, before you put anything, you will be all in white. Pure white, washed by the blood of the Lamb. And then only you begin to put on all the other colors one layer at a time. And uh, then among the final piece is the breastplate and then the turban, which is the finale. By the time you put on the turban and assign the holiness to the Lord, you're ready for ministry. So between now, 2015, to 2020, September, God is putting on layers at a time. You will tangibly, check tangibly, feel different layers of the anointing. Why is God preparing us and equipping us for all these things? Because when we enter into the second cycle, 2020, 2027, we will literally enter into the decade of power. And it is a decade of signs and wonders. Let me talk about the opposition first in more detail that I touch on in part one. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible just mentioned one phrase and we can tell you in detail what these are the things are in verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying oneness. With all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth and they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they believe the lie. Now notice in verse 9, the coming of the lawless one is according to the energizing of Satan. The word there is energizing, working, okay, energized. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. In this year, 2015, with the birth of the Antichrist, which is with his coming, fallen angels, in fact, the Antichrist himself is a fallen angel taking on human flesh. Something that has never been done in the same manner 
before. It's different, as I described in part 1, from Genesis 6. This is totally different. And with His coming, all the energies of the fallen angel and fallen spirit beings, fallen spirit beings, are going to work together to produce lying signs, lying wonders to, to the world's astonishment. Some of the things I described that the same tricks that they did in Moses' time when Janice and Jengress could take an ordinary stick and I repeat, this is no illusion that is coming. Say, so how can it be possible scientifically based on the laws of physics that we all have understood laws of physics, laws of chemistry, and all the laws that we have known, the scientific laws, are going to go out the window. <coughs> because fallen spirit beings are in. And it's not actually just the stick. When fallen spirit beings inhabit a stick, they can actually change the molecules. A lot of matter around us is actually empty space. You all know that matter is made up from atoms and molecules. Well, if one atom, uh, atoms normally don't go alone. They go in groups called molecules. If one atom were the size of a stadium, You know how big the nucleus is? Very smart Alex. Oh, he's just coming in. <laughs> if an atom were to be magnified until the size of a stadium, let's say 100,000 sitting stadium, you know how big the nucleus will be? Take a guess. A football. Any other guess? It is the size of a pea. There's a lot of empty space in the atom, don't you think so? I mean, it's the size of one of your green pea. Or the small version of the red bean. If the atom were magnified into the size of a stadium, not even as big as a football. It is the size of a pea. That shows how much empty space is inside every atom. In molecules. In fact, we exist with different atoms, molecules, elements, and all that combine into us. A certain percentage of water and all those things. If all of the actual substance of matter were to be squashed in a human being, Squashed together until it's really tightly matter. We will be like one tiny little speck smaller than a fly. But here we are, five feet something to six feet something. We look like sizable matter. But can you imagine all of you could be squashed into a tiny little spot smaller than what a fly is sitting on? So I want to open your mind to the fact that all those, the reason we have all this substance and feel this substance is because it's like a balloon and you're feeling the surface of the balloon in matter. The spirit beings are the one energizing all things. So the spirit beings can easily manipulate molecules and make it come alive. It won't be like a normal snake, although it can bite like a normal snake, but it's because that actual fallen spirit beings energizing. 
So before the eyes of scientists or the skeptics, the atheists of the world, the lying signs and wonders will be demonstrated. And like in part one I mentioned, our job as a glorious church is every time they show signs and wonders, you will go and you proclaim the name of Jesus, proclaim the message of Jesus, and stop all the lying signs. Stop all the lying signs. That is our job. They can also make inanimate matter come alive. But actually, it is a fallen spirit being. Not just demons anymore. Demons are just disembodied spirits. They have been active all the time. Sometimes people who are possessed, they speak, the demons speak through them. And sometimes people have what I call um, uh, expect, uh, here and there in, in, in human, human society, they might have, uh, for example, uh, a person might demonstrate things, uh, telekinesis and all kinds of things because of demonic activity, a word of knowledge, all the same through demonic activity. But those are just demons. With the coming of the Antichrist, there's another layer that comes, it's the fallen spirit beings. And so what's going to happen is that they can make a whole statue and the, and the fallen spirit being will inhabit the statue and make it come alive. Things that we only see in movies, are going to be present, you know what year? 2020 to 2027. So it's not that far away. After the Antichrist is born, this year, within five years, they will start accumulating enough energy. Now, they are not going to suddenly be able to get it that much energy. Uh, so many people are converts. It's going to be just a few at first who have dedicated themselves to the enemy. The devil will find people whom he can possess and use. And they will be given powers from the fallen angel that has never been permitted before before 2015. Before the year 2015, our angels and angels guard this planet Earth. And do not permit any fallen angel, any fallen spirit being to give power to humans. The last occasion that ever took place was in Moses' time. But no more sins. But with the birth of the Antichrist, it's going to come back again. They will also demonstrate when they are energized by the fallen spirits, superhuman strength. It will be like your Antichrist Samson. Yes. Whatever Samson had in the Bible, they will have their duplication. But the difference is, all of you, 12, 30, 70 times 2, 120 times 2, some of you will be go, going forth to proclaim, in the name of Jesus, and then they suddenly have no more strength. That is the difference. You'll be going out to challenge them. Say, when? Five years time, are you ready? Some of you say, five years time, wow! That's why now we're telling you ahead. <laughs> Start training. Start training now. If you want to be among the 500, 
give yourself to this training. No more time to waste. And they will levitate things. Things as heavy as a piano. Under demonic power, they will just leave it up. No magic tricks like they do. Like human magicians using science and hidden wires and all kinds of tricks. This will be actually supernatural. But then you will go and say, in Jesus' name, and the thing stops working. That is your authority. But I have refrained from mentioning this thing that is even more horrible. It won't be immediately. But somewhere, I pray. That's why your intercession is nice and important. Our intercession can hold back a lot of things. Our intercession and prayer is important. <coughs> and I pray that it will be only permitted to the later part of the second cycle. Some of them will be so possessed by fallen spirits that they can change shape. They can appear as a man, appear as a young woman, appear as an old woman, appear as an animal, and change different animal forms. This is exactly like movies. Don't you think so? But, I'm giving you facts ahead of time that this is what the world is going to be like. So you're not prepared to enter that kind of world. Leave this planet before 2020. If you're going to remain on this planet after 2020, all that you have learned of the laws of physics are going to be redefined. There will of course be a group of scientists keep studying, studying, and they will have they will have metaphysical explanations. But the fact is, lying, science, and oneness are going to reach that proportion. So this is why you cannot rely just on what your eyes see anymore. Because if they can take the shape and form of any animal, of any man or woman, how will you know who is who? What happens if they take the form of Benaya sitting there and they come to church? And by that time, the church could be one million strong. And then you look, looks like Benaya, talks like Benaya, walks like Benaya, but your heart gives a siren. It's not Benaya. <laughs> what are you going to do? Can you see in the time you really must see in the spirit? You must see in the spirit. Because the natural is deceptive. Now, not many of them are going to have that kind of power. But can you imagine the kind of powers that God is permitting of the enemy? It's a frightening thought. Because never before in the history of our modern society, has such things ever been permitted? Not even Janus and Jen Briggs turn into different shapes and form. Because, fortunately or unfortunately, you're living in the same dimension as the Antichrist. That is what is different. So see some of those things and then they are going to revive, as I mentioned, the worship of Baal. And if you trace the history of Baal worship, Baal worship involves 
uh, temple prostitution. Bill worship involves human sacrifice. And the Encyclopedia Britannica trace Baal worship all the way. Actually, Baal, in its original form, was also holding a thunderbolt. And it passed down to become the Greek god Zeus. They just changed the face like that. So. He used to be Balus, and then became Zeus. And by the time Greek culture started coming forth, it is actually the same evil the flowing through. And using our modern way, they're going to use all the science fiction and magical stories to create side religions that in the end lead to the worship of Baal. They will use things like Star Wars and there will be you know, people thinking they're yielding to the force, the force. But there's no such thing. There's only the Holy Spirit. And at first it seemed to be good powers to do things because they would be able to have powers to lift things by the force. But it all is demonic, satanic. And some of them not just change shape, they are they're going to be like a cloak and their eyes itself become reddish color. Physically, they are changed. These are the times that are coming in 2020 to 2027. Five years time. And during those times, the glory of the church will have been perfected by 2020, which means you've got five years to enter into that. And in 2020 to 2027, <coughs> all the 12, the 30, the 70 times 2, the 120 times 2 will be going forth. And according to God's assignment, you'll be challenging some of these things. Like for example, Arion, in U.S. it was shown how he was taken into the future and he saw in a meeting one of the disciples of that Satan because at that time Nicholas still young and he saw them trying to convince humans to worship their religion in God and then in the crowd like all humans there's a group of people who didn't believe and were heckling them. And then they took their rod, threw it on the ground, and they became a poisonous snake. The poisonous snake went and beat the heckler, and the heckler died on the spot. People were frightened. And then Aaron saw himself together with a few others. He didn't see the others, not clear. He only saw himself because that was his vision. Going forth. And then saying, in the name of Jesus, and he raised the person up from the dead. And then he threw his, he went and took a reed and threw it down. And he became a snake. And that snake, Swallow the other thing. These are some of the things you all will be doing. All that you saw that Moses did, the templates, you will be doing. The anointing of God will be upon your life. And in his latest download, when he saw some of these things, he also saw how Moses put the hand and came out, became leprous. And actually, he allowed it to be examined. And there will be some of the signs that we will be actually going to people with this message. Talking to them about this end-time message. You'll be going out to the world to tell the end-time message. You will be given the exact same signs as Moses. 
you will be allowed to take a rod need not necessarily be the exact same tree or anything any type of rod and then the Lord will tell you and will teach you when you throw it down it will become a snake in front of people you will be doing those signs and you will be doing the sign of leprosy which will be frightening the people and when that is done not recorded in the Bible but in visions, Moses allowed the experts to examine his hand when he was telling the people. And remember, those signs, the first few signs are for the people of God. Look at the book of Exodus, chapter 2. The first few signs are for the people of God. And then they were used to confront the enemy. Exodus chapter 2. And chapter 3. He was sent to go to Pharaoh. And uh, says here in uh, verse 4. There are three signs given. One is the rod, and uh, Moses was sent to them. Let's look at verse 1 first. But suppose they will not believe me. When you look at the context in chapter 3, verse 13. Moses said to God, now, let's read from uh, verse 12 and 13. God says, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses in verse 13 said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel, in Exodus 3, 13, and they say to me, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Then the Lord says, say, I am who I am. And he's talking about the children of Israel. He says in verse 16, Go and gather the elders of Israel. From 2020 onwards, after September, we will go and gather church leaders of all denominations. So if you're worried about this message going out, don't worry. This first cycle, the message is going out with normal, sign, normal healing and gifts of the Spirit. In other words, there will be the normal operation of gifts as much as all has been Christian agents. We will have some signs and wonders and miracles of what I call gifts of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 12. But it's more or less a message. Just the main message. So there will be people who believe and people who don't believe just because of the message. They will check it whether it's in line with the word, check whether it glorifies Jesus and all the users check, no problem. The message is allowed to be checked. And some of them will, won't believe, some of, them will, uh, some of them will believe, some won't believe. They, we have thousands of people who believe on the internet already. That's alright. But from 2020 onwards, it's a different cycle. God Himself was sent us to denominational leaders. And that's where some of you are worried. Now, when were they ever here? I'm telling you now, the cycle of time. See, God has now tell us and told us, we cannot do anything without God, correct? We will never be able to do anything without God. You can only do it when God sent you. And I'm saying, God will send us to all the biggest churches and all the main denominations. And we will tell them together, if they don't want to gather, judgment will come. 
If they were gathered together, then they say proof that you have the message from God. We will be doing signs and wonders. Exactly like Moses did. And we allow them to examine. First to them, then to the world. So rest assured that this message of the end time will be heard by the whole church of Jesus Christ that is organized, the charity as we know it, before the tsunami comes. And God wants to raise up more leaders. There will be some who believe they will follow. And some who don't believe, judgment will come. Exactly like the judgment of Ananias and Sapphira. They will die on the spot. Now, the enemy, I didn't mention, there are too many things to mention. The enemy also will show certain powers where at one word they can kill people. On the spot, people drop down and die. And then when you and I are sent to that place, remember every time fallen angel demonstrate power, you are the police. You are God's angels, angelic police, working with the angel. You will go there and raise them from the dead and cancel their power. And at the same time, you also have power. This message I have been telling you over and over again will go forth with signs and wonders. And the reason we cannot tell much is because we wait until God show more. But now that God show more, we tell you exact times and all these things that are happening. So he was sent to gather the elders together. And Moses also tell that, and of course our message is to say, the Lord Jesus Christ has sent us. And they say, prove that Jesus has sent you. Well, here are the proofs. Besides all the normal signs and wonders and healings. And uh, there will be times when we call down fire from heaven also. So there will be all the same. But everything can only be done based on the spoken word of God. God will be speaking and say, do this, do this, do this. And that is why we will know God's voice. And obey God's voice. So it says, gather, in verse 16, the elders of Israel together and say to them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, Jacob, appeared to me saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done in Egypt. Egypt represents the world. God is now calling forth his bride. His bride must come forth from all the denominations. And so there was a, there's a time for that. And uh, then verse 18. Then they will hear your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Israel. And uh, then the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, verse 19, will let you go. God says, I will strike that. And then told them well, how God will prosper them too. Uh, we go and say where everything that they ask for. Then in chapter 4, verse 1, but suppose they will not believe me. See, I give you the context so that you know the they refer to the children of Israel. It's not just referring to singular, the king of Egypt who doesn't believe. So contextually, Moses had to do the signs and wonders to his own people and of course, as a demonstration. And then, later on, he has to confront Janice and Jambres and the unbeliever. To both. So there is the context. So if the people of God say, the Lord hasn't appeared to you, and then you will have these three signs. First sign, 
in a sign in which, of course, for us, we have the spirit beings working with us. And there are three spirit beings who work with Jesus. And I know them by various names. Uh, and normally I wait until somebody else catch the thing. And only recently, uh, another under the China trip, one of the twelve have got more revelation on that too. And there's a confirmation. And one of the spirit beings who work with Jesus has already revealed his name. And Jesus himself confirmed, this is the name. You don't know how significant that is. All the miracles of Jesus are done through spirit beings. To work the works of Jesus, you have to have the same anointing of Jesus, and of course the same relationship you have with the Father. But you also have to understand how he does the miracles technically. The miracles are all done to spirit beings. Like when Moses parted the Red Sea, there were two spirit beings in war. See, spirit beings control the forces of nature. And the Red Sea was not a simple parting. The, wall, the, the water was like a wall, standing 90 degrees. No science of physics could do that. Spirit beings. Spirit beings are in war. And when God was doing this, the rod or the control of animation of molecules is through spirit beings. So in the same way, and then when Moses put his other sign, and God, God said, Arion will show this sign. And he says, when you do this sign, let them take samples from your hand. Put under the microscope and confirm that it's leprosy. So God is going to allow the signs to be put under microscope. And then once they confirm it, all the medical doctors, they confirm it, you put your hand in, come out, it's perfectly healed. Control and power over all sickness and disease. We're not talking about ordinary 1 Corinthians 12 healing anymore. We're talking about creative miracles. And it's during this time that we have some demonstrations where we have what I call demonstrative healing. Demonstrative healing will be like what you saw uh, in Acts chapter 3 and Acts uh, chapter 17 as Paul was preaching. Where a particular miracle is chosen. And we will not only have Acts chapter 3, people who cannot, never walk in their life, instantly heal. That one, we have seen some signs and wonders throughout the church uh, revival stage. But this time, it will be like taking from a crowd someone who has a leg amputated or hand amputated. And you know there's only one God who can create. And at the name of Jesus, the person has a new hand public. And the name of Jesus, a person who might have both legs amputated, have two new legs, and then walk right up of the wheelchair. Those are some of the signs and wonders that are being released second cycle. That is why God has so chosen to reveal the names of the spirit beings working so that we can become one and synchronize with them. 
demonstrating healings. Remember Paul said that my preaching is not by word only, but in demonstration of the Spirit. When today you talk about demonstration of the Spirit, it's mainly, you know, people falling in the power here, falling in the power, falling in the power, then after falling in the power, they get some miracles in there. It's not like that. It's going to be actually demonstrating a creative healing. After that, I'm sure the worship service is going to be wonderful. These are signs and wonders that God is bringing forth in the period of 2020 to 2027. You've got five years to get ready. Now the five years look very short. Eh? You've got five years to get you ready. And these five years are going to be like, each year is going to be like learning 10 years thing. It's going to be so much things that God's going to teach us. Each year is going to be accelerated. What you're going to learn in each year about the things of the Spirit, how to work with God, is going to accelerate our growth in God. And that which is to happen. So I can imagine some of you going around and, you know, so you might go around with a stick, but not because you're so old you need a stick as a tongkat, but because you're using the stick as a demonstration. Going forth, this is a different church revival. <coughs> We have not seen this kind of move in any church revival. Because whatever church revival we had was not enough to confront the spirit of Antichrist. Against lying signs and wonders, you must have genuine signs and wonders. Can you see that? You must have genuine signs and wonders because the, the enemy is demonstrating this kind of power if our God is God, He can demonstrate greater. He can cancel everything they do and demonstrate something greater. That is the time that we live in. From 2020 to 2027. But it comes with a warning. That's why it's part of this prophecy. In 2027 to 2034, after experiencing the period of power and so much great power, there will be three times the rebellion will take place within the church. And only three. Which is why tonight I ask you to pray. And Jesus' message is this. If we pray, the rebellion will be limited. What will the rebellion be like? Now, when Moses was blessing the second generation to go with Joshua into the promised land, he foretold that there will be a time when they will rebel. Remember that? Okay, you don't remember that? It's towards the end of the book of Deuteronomy. Then we meet the book of Deuteronomy. <coughs> Last few chapters. And chapter 30, 31, 31. Verse 14. Behold, the days approach when you must die and call Joshua and present yourself in a tabernacle meeting that I may inaugurate. Now, God wants this to be recorded as a prophecy. <coughs> because these things will take place. And when they take place, you'll know that they're way ahead. In verse 16, the Lord said to Moses, Behold, you will rest with your fathers, and these people will rise and play the harlot with the gods of the foreigners of the land, where they go to be among them. 
and they will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be aroused against them in the day, and I will forsake them. I will hide my face from them. So God predict before they even started going to the land, they haven't even con- haven't even conquered one thing in a promised land. God already predict what will happen. The good thing was it happened only after Joshua generation died. So it was the second generation after Joshua generation, second and third and onwards. Then they started going astray. They haven't even entered the promised land of foresaw something. We haven't in, even entered the power stage of, of 2020 to 2027. God already showing the third stage. That's how far God can see. And why is it revealed? Because by that time we will have the 12, the 30, the 70, and 70, and 120, and 120. Somewhere during the decade of wars, which is 2027 to 2034, remember it says the decade of wars. In the middle of it, I will be asked by Jesus to make a decision in terms of appointing people and doing different things. A group will be unhappy with that decision. And they will rebel. Of course, by that time they don't see Jesus. You know, if they see Jesus clearly, they wouldn't rebel. They don't see God properly, and they will rebel. Say, so what kind of rebellion? It will be like Korah's rebellion in the middle of the decade of war of the what I call the third cycle of war. 2027 to 2034. They will be unhappy with my decision. But it actually is not my decision. It's going to be a decision Jesus asked me to make in the middle of that. And in that rebellion, it's because by that time we are huge. And when you are huge by the millions, you are like a whole country. All the ten churches will have been built and our estimated size is nearly a billion people. It's like a whole country. I will have the twelve on the second generation, the twelve, the seventy and hundred and twenty. On the first generation I have the thirty mighty men and women, the seventy and 120. The rebellion will not take place among the 12 or the 30. Because the 12 are all actually my spiritual sons and daughters, both in the spirit and here on earth. They know each other, train them personally before we came to her and put something into their life. They will be true disciples of Jesus to the end. The 30, because they also have the training, they will be as loyal as the 30 mighty men of David. Nothing can sway them. So they will go through all this rebellion and touch. Remember when Absalom rebelled against David? The 30 mighty men don't follow Absalom. Even David without a kingdom, they still follow David. You know why? They follow David since the Adulam king. So when David was without a kingdom, and David with a kingdom, and David without a kingdom again, they still follow David. So the 30 mighty men and women will not be swayed. But the Lord revealed the enemy will try to work, and the enemy is allowed three chances. Only three chances. One from the 70 of the second generation. And one from the 120 of the first generation will be swayed. And they will almost lead a rebellion like Korah. 
But this is what the Lord asks us to do. Pray. Because underneath, see, these are my, the governments that we set up. The 12, the 70, the, the, the 120 for the second generation. The 30, the 70, and the 120 in the first generation. Underneath this will be hundreds of thousands of mighty leaders. Mighty leaders. So I point to you in the book of Numbers. Because the Lord said these things will happen. In the book of Numbers, In Numbers, chapter 16, verse 1 to verse 2. Korah, the son of Ishak, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. So he is of the priestly line. With Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and on the son and on the son of Pella, sons of Reuben, took men. They rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel, two hundred and fifty leaders of the congregation, representatives of the congregation, men of renown. That means they are popular figures. Now, Korah, the Korah rebellion will take place in the middle and try to split the glorious church. In 2000, between 2027 to 2034, mark those days. So that when they occur, you will know. But it will all be over a disagreement of a decision, an administration decision, administrative decision that Jesus, that I will make under Jesus' instruction, according to what Jesus asked me to do. But there are some who will disagree. But one thing Jesus said, the reason that this rebel is because their hearts are not right. They have pride. And the same stuff, anger. Pride and anger. They forgot one thing. They forgot we can do nothing without Jesus. And they forgot that if Jesus tells us to do a few things, we do a few things. Jesus tells us to do many things, we do many things. Nothing more, nothing less. And so, part of it is they always have felt that they should be among the 12 and the 30. But there's only space for 12 and space for 30 in the first round. Second round is only space for 70 and 70. And the third round, 120, 120. But then Jesus says He will have mercy if we pray. Because the rebellion won't be instigated by that. If it's instigated by political people underneath them. And you know who they are. They are men of renown. Because don't forget, you're governing one billion people. But they're over one billion. So there were mighty men of renown, if efficient people, and they will start from there. They're going to be unhappy with certain decisions. And they will stir up one from the second generation, one from the first generation, and a rebellion of Korah almost coming up. How will they be stirred up since they are not actually the origins of the rebellion? And Jesus says, because they are not the origin of the rebellion, it didn't start in their heart, it start lower than them. But they are over these people. Because the people underneath them will be very clever politicians. 
they will use Epsilon's technique. Do you know how long Epsilon took to win the hearts of the people? Four years. So his strategy was not like, you know, in six months do a rebellion. It built it over many years. So that's really playing politics. Playing for the long haul. And because these people have something in their heart that's not right, pride and unresolved anger, they got used by others. And that is in the middle of the third cycle. And during that rebellion, if you pray right now from tonight, until then, the rebellion will only be restricted to two of the 12, 30, 70 times 2, 120 times 2, only to two. If you like prayer, it might spread more. But what will happen and what will be done? The Lord will instruct me to do a sign to end the rebellion. And exactly like Moses telling the people, if what is done is made by God and in God, then let those who are for God's side stand on one side. And then those who are not on God's side, because behind them will actually be fallen angel. They don't realize it. Actually, it's fallen angel. And then the Lord will ask me to command in Jesus' name and the earth will open up and swallow them. And everyone will know this is no ordinary time to rebel. They will go alive in the Hades because they die in the process. The earth will open up and swallow them. However, I pray that this won't happen. Let us pray that this will not happen. Because the Lord says, these two will have a chance to repent. For the rebellion didn't start in them. It start in those lower than them. But through flattery, they got moved. And here's the other thing. Because they are among those who have demonstrated power. They have tasted power. They have demonstrated turning the, the stick in the snakes and other demonstration. So they have tasted power. But they don't know their place. If they do not repent, it will be between fallen angels and God, the earth will swallow them up. But if they repent, such things will not happen. Their lives will be safe. So I ask you tonight to pray for that period of rebellion. That. And the Lord says, you cannot pray to stop it from happening. You can only pray that it is pray that the only wet cement about it, it will happen. The only wet cement about it is how many people are involved in the rebellion. We pray that it be none of those in among the five hundred and only among the lower ones. Your intercession can help a lot. So I pray that we don't have to do such a thing. And after that demonstration, all the 500 resolve such a thing will never happen again. But if you notice in chapter 
16 in chapter 16 <coughs> after the earth opened up and swallowed the people look at verse 30 in chapter we're looking at chapter 16 verse 30 Moses says if the Lord creates a new thing and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them and they go down alive into the pit then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord such will be how God deals with rebellion that is inspired by fallen angels because it's a different time and uh, then after they went down and in verse 35, fire came out from the Lord and consumed 250 men who were offering incense. All of them died. But look at what happened the next day, verse 41. The next day, the congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of the Lord. It won't be the next day. Towards the end, of 2000, the third period of 2027 to 2034, towards the end of that time. Now you already know that if it's in the middle, it's already after the tsunami. Correct? So tsunami happens two years into 2027. It happens in 2029. So the rebellion actually takes place after the tsunami. Uh, it's a period of science that wonders it. Uh, it's a different world altogether. And remember, it's a, dec it's, it's a whole decade of war. War after war. All the same. Continuously. So seven full years of instability. And it creeped into the church. So in the middle of, around the middle of that time, is where the rebellion tried to split the church. And the law will not allow it to be split. The law will not allow it. And so God immediately removed those. And then the church unites around it. But in Moses' time, the next day, there was a second rebellion. But for us, the second rebellion takes place towards the end of the third cycle. So, since the cycle is only seven years, it be a couple of years later. And the second rebellion, again, with much prayer, it does not affect any of the 500. By 500, I mean the 12, 30, 70 times 2, 120 times 2. But only those lower than that. And it is more because of still some unhappiness over the first rebellion. Exactly like Korah. And that one will be dealt with by fire coming God from God. Again, God deals with it. God will not allow His glorious church to be divided. After that, the church unites together again. And continues on into the fourth phase from 2034 right on to the next several cycles until now the Lord allows it to be revealed until 2060 2060 September 18 and 2060 September 19 is the day I finish my work and I'll be taken home translated and after that will be a third rebellion and this time the rebellion will be over who is in charge I'm going to appoint one of the twelve the leader of the twelve is Sam he's the leader of the twelve I'm going to appoint him and they will be a group of unhappiness to say no 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 are you sure you got the right one on that so 
the rebellion will be settled in a very easy way. All those whom the Lord chose will put their rod together with Sam. And the glory of God will come and their rod will bite. Exactly like Moses' time. And not only does it happen at that time, it will happen also during the third period of the rebellion. When God proved himself in chapter 17, when God says, Who are those who are chosen? Because everyone thinks they're chosen. Everyone has de demonstrated power. And uh, in fact, part of the rebellion that took place in the first rebellion uh, with uh, one of the second generation and one of the first generation is also because they didn't feel they're given much authority, power, and signs and wonders. But all these are given by God. Remember, we are nothing without God. And again, I remind everyone, if all God called us to do is just to be a 24-hour worshiper, we should be the happiest person on earth. To each is given different tasks. And we must flow with the task that God has given to us. Even if you do zero signs and wonders and your job is just to worship God in the glory of God, that is a really something wonderful. Only people who like attention, likes attention type of ministry. And sometimes God calls those who don't like attention to the attention type of ministry because they know they won't be affected. But in chapter 17, of the book of Numbers, God says here to Moses in verse 2, Speak to the children of Israel, get from them a rod from each father's house, all their leaders according to their father's house, twelve rods. Write each man's name on his rod, and you shall write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi, for there shall be one rod for each head of the house, and then you shall place them in the tabernacle of meeting before me. And it shall be that the rod of the man whom I chose will blossom. I will read myself on the complaints of the children of Israel. And in verse 6, when they did all those things, in verse 8, it came to pass on the next day that Moses went to the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron, the house of Levi, had sprouted and put forth buds, produced blossoms, yielded ripe almond overnight. It's not going to happen just one time. It's going to happen many times when the authority of God is challenged. So I have given you some clues and asked for some intercession. Because there will only be three times the Lord allowed the glorious church to be tested. And that's all. Only three times. And we know it ahead of time. Many years ahead. So that you could cover it with intercessions and cover every leader, every one of the twelve, every one of the thirty, every. That's why I always say we want to raise one million intercessors for the ministry. One million who dedicates themselves to just interceding, specialize in intercession. Of course, we will have dedicated worshippers who worship on 24 hours in teams. So those we will raise up. It's important for us to raise all those things. Uh, and in the kingdom of light, in the pristine zone, I mentioned about how 24-hour worship will be that which keep the pristine pristine. And so people will be specialized. And they'll be energized by the Spirit of God. So for tonight, I give you some things to pray for. I ask you to pray for the coming three rebellions. It's way ahead. When time comes closer, we mention to you. And I also will give you the name of the archangel who worked with Elijah, uh, together with Uriah Luzael, who is the angel of the church, of which uh, easy to call them fire and all those. But uh, the, the angel's name, they can add to your list is um, Astakutael A-S-T-A-C-U-T-A-E-L He's the same one who strengthened Samson 
is the same one who gives strength and supernatural strength. It's the same uh, angel who fed Elijah under the sycamore tree, and on what he fed him, Elijah went for 40 days without food and water. And by the way, there are some of you who are going to be fed by angels. There are just too many things for me, too, many, too much download, so I just give a bit of the time. As, as, I, as I say that, I remember something I tell you. But among the downloads, some of you are going to be fed by angels, and you don't need to eat and drink for 40 days and 40 nights. Whoa, the kind of fuss is nice, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, so, now, he is the angel who created that and also worked with uh, Elijah on calling down uh, fire. And, uh, of course, also pray to strengthen. Remember, uh, we have the archangel uh, uh, of COG over all of COG who works directly with me. But under him are the 10 general angels who work with the 10 major churches and then under them are the 10,000 other angels who are uh, one each of the 10,000 churches that are planted. And the team leader of the 10 generals is Yusas Sumael. U double S A S U M A E L. And he's a team leader. And Kenneth, uh, when we were in China, the name of the angel I gave you, the one that um, Jerusha says is saw pink light, that one, and I gave the name. That one is also one of the generals and assigned to China for you. And then the other is one of the main, um, Ragi Ra'al is in charge of transportation and a lot of energizing all those things together with um, uh, he got several angels under him one of them is uh, Esther T-R-E-L E-S-T-A T-E-R-I-E-L and uh, so she's one of the angels that are peculiar in the sense that she's feminine looking Right. And the other one, and that is the spirit being who worked with Jesus. So you can pray for God to strengthen all these angels in this time. Because as they are strengthened, they strengthen you. Spirit being who works with Jesus is Yukatuk uh, Ma'al. U-C-A-T-U-C-M-A-E-L. Now, all those things plus all the other names of the angels have been given in order for all of us, because we are all one church together. I may be the under shepherd that God has appointed to be over in charge of the church, that uh, all are working together as one. As you pray for this energizing, this energizing flows through you. And uh, there are so many good things also you can pray about tonight. The, because all of you are hearing the message here, all of you who are listening here today are part of the 30 and 70, are part of the 12 and the 70. The 120 are all over the place. And as to who specifically are the 12, 30, 70 times 2, 120 times 2, is for you to press in. To press in to walk with God. To press in and find your place. Remember what I said uh, earlier in this uh, message. Because of free will and free choice. When, and Jesus said that, if the two that rebel are removed and die, they will be replaced. We pray that such a thing will not happen, right? Pray that nobody will miss it. But even right now, while we are preparing the team of the 500 over people who are being trained from heaven, if any of the 12 don't make it, some from the 70 will be selected to be the 12. Any of the 70 didn't make it, 
Some of the 120 have selected in the cemetery. Any of the 120 don't make it, some from the general group will come into the 120. The numbers are fixed. Who the numbers are are by predestination. But predestination requires your free will. If your free will don't flow with that, and you drop off like Judas is carried, Matthias will replace. So among the 30, the same way. How do we measure all this? Do not vie for position. That's the first thing. Positions, what are they? They are just appointments. And here's another encouraging thing. This work on earth is only a small bit compared to new heaven and the new earth. Some of those who are not among the 12, the uh, 30, the 70 times 2, or 120 times 2, have important positions in the new heaven and new earth. Very important position. However, positions are positions on earth, duties are duties, responsibilities are responsibilities, you just have to fulfill that. So don't think that if you miss out, I like I encourage you, don't think that because you miss out on the 12, the 30, the 70 times 2, 120 times 2, that that's it. No. Because positions are different in heaven. And all positions are based only on one thing. Everyone in the book of the Lamb, or which is kept in a library, the first page, preface before it starts, is the big word, humility. So if you cannot absorb humility into your life and become the servant of all, you cannot serve in the book of the Lamb. Humility means that we are willing to be nothing. I've told you all before, God knows the heart of my heart. I will be more satisfied to just be a pillar in the temple of God, worshipping 24 hours. That's all I ever want to be. Just close to God. If I don't have to meet any human, I'm fine too. In fact, for a long period in the heavenlies, I didn't meet with anyone. And I was very, very happy. It's only in the later days that more and more my role is revealed and some of those in the spirit begin to know who I am in the spirit. Because I'm so happy just to be in Him. Not interested in the rest of the universe. My universe is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's my universe. Not so interested in the other universe. The creation. So let's all remember this. We are nothing without Jesus. And it is only what Jesus wants us to be and to do. But just as the disciples before Jesus Christ died had some murmurings among them to see who was the greatest, remember? Remember who was fighting among them? The twelve disciples. They were fighting who is among the greatest. So if that happened to them, you can imagine what would happen. Under Jesus corrected them. When James and John want to be right hand and left hand. And then in another gospel, it didn't say James and John. It said the mother of James and John. So they recruit the mother into the fight. And then Jesus has to tell them, the father already assigned all these things. This earth is a tiny picture of what is already assigned. These are assigned jobs. In the end, our reward is not fame, power, position, or wealth. Our reward should be Jesus. Just the joy of serving Him, even He tells us to do one thing, should be our reward. If we all keep our eyes on Jesus, the rebellion will be kept 
to zero among the 500. And to a certain extent, the anointing will be so great among the 500 that because of the anointing, they are protected from the fallen angel possessing them. Even when they rebel, those two. Just say the anointing protected them. So you can imagine how great the anointing each one of you are going to receive. And of course, our predestination is not what we do. What we do flows from what we are. Our predestination is just to be conformed to the full image of Jesus. That's all. Get to know Jesus. He is so humble, even in the spiritual world. He is so powerful. He is God. We all are creation. But when he walked in the midst of the angels and do all these different things, he is like a humble servant. He is the one we must follow. His attributes, his character. And if Jesus and Jesus alone is our goal, not positions in the glorious church, not powerful signs and wonders, although those things will come, not mighty recognition, not handling a great wealth, although there are trillions of dollars that are going to be handled, not all those things. If our, our whole love and desire is only for Jesus, you will have no problem whatever Jesus asks you to do or don't you do. Because remember, He is our reward. And that's all I ever want. I said, I did not ask for all these positions and all those things. I said, Lord, I'd be interested in just hang around you the rest of eternity. But it's because of that I got a point to this type of job. But it's important that that get carried in each one of our hearts. That we all only desire Jesus. So this concludes, uh, at least in summary, there are a lot of other details that we'll talk in time. As I said, that we will have coming up uh, in the next month or so, some question and answer on some of these recent things that are happening. Uh, and, uh, they can only come up when you have questions and answers and all those things because you don't know exactly how to put in a message in which part to come. But uh, there are a lot of details that God is giving that we must move into. Uh, and, uh, it's a tremendous period of glory coming. And each year is going to be like 10 years in the next five years. By the time we reach September 2020, all of us will be so changed and transformed. You cannot recognize it. And you'll be moving into science and wonders, the period of power in the Lord. So let's start preparing ourselves. Tonight, intercede for the three rebellions that are permitted by God. Intercede for the glorious church and for yourself. Your part in the glorious church. Strengthen all the angels whose names by now you know and the spirit beings. Pray for the energizing of yourself in your spirit, soul, and body as you enter and fuse together and join ourselves together with the archangels, the spirit beings, with the Holy Spirit, with our Lord Jesus, we God the Father, for this great work. Remember that you are going to be sent out. You are the Moses to be sent out. You are the Elijah to be sent out. You are going to do works greater than even the twelve apostles in the Bible. Such is our privilege. So let's give ourselves unreservedly to God without condition and pray tonight into His full glory. Let's all rise together.